everyone. It's day. We are doing a 60s look. I'm low-key so excited for the 60s because it's all about a bit more colour. There's some really like statement eye looks that are very different from like what we've seen in the last few videos. This is when people really started having fun with their makeup and using like really bold colours and techniques. Getting a little bit more artistic and I feel like the 60s is an area that we're currently seeing in trend again at the moment in terms of like makeup styles and stuff like that, like cut crease, big lashes, defined lower lash lines and just stuff like that. Now for fashion, like a lot of like high neckline outfits with like collars or like pinafore dresses and things, which I don't have anything like that. So I'm just wearing a freaking t-shirt. They loved headbands and things. I don't even have any headbands anymore that like fit with 60s, but we're just gonna play around, do our hair and makeup. I'll probably start my hair now and then like finish my hair at the end of the video. Just do something really simple and chic. Everyone knows like the twiggy look um, with the like super defined crease, so I might take a little bit of inspo from that. Lipsticks that we're in were like pinks and peaches and nudes and stuff like that, which is quite different from the past where it was way more like bold colors and reds. A lot of people liked um, like a lot more color in their eyeshadow. Some people still did just like natural, of course. Course, but it's kind of where I think blue especially was kind of becoming a lot more popular blue and teal and any of those types of like green and blue shades I feel like overall the makeup is just a lot more fun and less natural if that makes sense lots of faux lashes people even like drew on their lower lashes too colors really took off and the rest of the face was kept more soft natural and understated and then for eyebrows in this decade there was a lot more variation some people really liked that kind of elizabeth taylor brow which was quite like strong bold whereas other people liked a very natural look like twiggy kind of eyebrows the doe-eyed look was huge where like the outer corner was kind of dragged downwards rather than upwards so yeah there's a lot more trends in the 60s i feel and I just love them like it's so fun the crease or socket whatever you want to call it is really really defined and these are some of the like popular colors that we're seeing I think I'm going to do more of like a bluey greeny look because I feel like I just saw so much of that false eyelashes were the fashion accessory of the 1960s fashionable girls wore them every day some even wore two or three sets one on top of the other there was a lot more different finishes for the skin too it wasn't just completely powdery matte anymore because they had way more formulations it says here like revlon had like different formulations so the skin started to look a little bit more natural and less powdered there was a lot more colors and shades that's exciting too um do you feel like this is just one of the coolest makeup decades like i think it is and i feel like the next video which is obviously going to be the 70s is going to be like similar vibes because obviously it's carrying on from the 60s so there was still a lot of color and everything but i feel like it was a little bit more glam and not soft because it was still dramatic but less like art deco looking almost like less emphasis on the lower lash line and stuff like that so we're gonna have a little bit of fun today it's gonna be very geometric very intense and hopefully very 60s once again if you're new to my channel hello don't forget to subscribe this series is just all about my interpretation so it's not necessarily historically correct it's just me taking inspiration and creating a look that I think is kind of vibing each decade so if you want to see my previous ones I'll list them all down below and let's just jump in I think I'm gonna start with my eye makeup today because I don't know how to like do the outer corners and everything I'm just gonna like start there so I can clean up any mistakes but I will prime first and I'm just gonna use this one because it's right here the Marc Jacobs coconut primer I'm actually just gonna tie up my hair out of my face actually before I do that let me just chuck in some dry shampoo just so that you know let's do its thing while we do the makeup this is actually a foam dry shampoo so I've been using this a ton you guys have seen it in my videos already the got to be by Schwarzkopf I really like it and it's so cheap I think it's like 12 or 13 dollars at the warehouse so I'm just gonna like smack it in I went to the gym today I'm on second day here so it's a little bit like oily just want to make sure it's nice and clean looking for this look because I feel like they had really nice sleek hair sometimes a bit of teasing and everything I don't know we'll look into it together a bit more at the end so I'm just gonna like massage that in now that I kind of put it in each section and it starts off looking kind of wet and it dries so quick and I just feel like it feels more comfortable in my hair I don't know about, about you guys but sometimes when I'm using a lot of dry shampoo powder sometimes it can get kind of itchy because it's just like a lot of product sitting there whereas this one almost just like dissolves if that makes sense I still love powder dry shampoo don't get me wrong but I've just been enjoying this for a change okay so first I'm just going to take some Born This Way Concealer by Too Faced and I'm just gonna like 
leave my brows fairly natural I might just add some like brow gel or something like that into them in a bit but I'm not gonna change the shape too much I'm just gonna wear them fairly natural and I do have them like tattooed and stuff so that's just how they look so I'm just using a concealer brush and I'm going to spread this out all over the lid and I will be doing like detail on the lower lashes too but we're just gonna start on the top and then I'll move on to my foundation I'm just gonna pop the excess just over some redness now I'm going to take a short shadow brush to do this next step. I'm a little bit nervous. Basically it's quite a harsh line through the crease that really defines. So I feel like I might take my Stacey Marie Makeup Artist palette. This is by Be Perfect um, Cosmetics. So I was looking at this shade Nuke, which is like a deep emerald greenish vibe. Then I thought I could also kind of obviously like blend a little bit with like one of the brighter kind of colors just not too sure which one yet I'm looking at photos here of like I don't know there's like one of Twiggy this kind of color inspiration right here is really nice with the really dark she's got a really dark like blue crease there's a photo of Twiggy drawing on her lower lashes so I might start with actually Showboat which is a mid-tone like bright teal kind of vibe and I'm just gonna Go just above my natural crease. Just gonna outline where I'm gonna put the darker color. So honestly, not too far off a lot of our 2020 and 2019 kind of makeup trends with cut creases and things like that. Obviously, we just do them a little bit different. And it looks like it does kind of go all the way to the end, just to help give that kind of doe-eyed effect where your eyes are like just like round and not super flicked upwards just more like rounded off i'm gonna take nuke now which is that real dark one and just kind of blend that in and i'm just going to use a lot of like back and forth motions to blend i'm not really blending up and out because it is a very harsh line it's not like softened um but i just want it to kind of blend with that other color hey zeus what's up this is very bright let me zoom you in a little god he's the naughtiest dog in the world he really is. Honestly, our career is just trying to do his job. And then just to kind of set like the eyeshadow in the other areas under my brow, I'm going to take Pillow Talk, which is like a bone shade, like a very whitish bone shade. All right, now I'm just going to take the tiniest amount of Y though, which is just lighter. I thought that stopped. I really did. I thought that stopped. I'm just going to put this one just kind of above, just because I think it looks cool. And it just kind of helps make it look somewhat softer. Even though, obviously, it's not a softer look. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? I'm just going to go back in one more time with Nuke, which is the real dark one, and just intensify. Make sure that's a strong, vibrant line to really go with that, like, 60s look. Is it 60s we're doing? It is, eh? I feel like sometimes I forget which look I'm doing, and I'm going to start saying the wrong decade, but... You guys know what I mean. We're just going in order. Also, a few suggestions for the next series, which is very exciting, because obviously I just love doing series. It's really good as well when I'm feeling a bit lost for inspiration. Like with the other videos, I'm like, oh, what do I want to film today? I don't know. These are like such a good go-to because I'm like, cool, let's just continue the series. I can like be inspired by something, you know? And someone recommended Planets, which is quite cool. I like that idea. Um, and then someone suggested, I think, Sweets. So like, you know, candy wrappers and stuff like that. It's always very vibrant, heaps of fun colors and everything and cool like combinations. A lot of complimentary tones. What are you guys thinking? Like vote down below, cause obviously you guys are the ones watching this. So what do you want to see? I've done gemstones, I've done cocktails. I've done Zodiac. What else have I done? I've done quite a few different series. Let me list some down below for you in case you're bored and want to just like watch some chill as content. All right, so whites were in and black so maybe we kind of like cut off the crease a little bit and do some white like part of me just really wants to reach in and grab like a color like this but it's probably not quite right can it focus on me and not my background <laughs> thank you this is um namiki green by shiseido it's just probably not right like i have these ones i could always like use these and then put like white on top i just don't want it to be too should I just try like a small amount? I have a white hair by Colourpop. So the white is called Exit Cream Gel Color by Colourpop. And then we also have Shiseido Paper Light Cream Eyeshadow in Asagi Blue. 
So I'm going to just like do some little like mixing. I'm going to use my Inglot Dura Line just to get it really creamy. And then I'm going to dig out a little bit of white with a Q-tip and just make like a whitish kind of pale as a blue. And then I'll set it afterwards. I just want to make sure I've got enough for both eyes here. Shit, I feel like my outer corners are really bad shape because I've kind of winged it up just out of habit when it should be kind of going down a little bit more. I don't know, maybe we can fix that soon. Now the 60s were not about perfection like I can see in the photos like you know you saw like mistakes and you saw um imperfect lines and everything but I'm still gonna try and do it fairly tidy but don't be pressured to do something that's like perfectly symmetrical it's so hard with cut creases because we've all got like very different eye shapes <laughs> like my eyes are two different shapes it's really hard to do stuff perfect like it's a very artistic look don't beat yourself up all right and now I'm just gonna go over the top of this with maybe pillow talk again which was the color we just kind of blended um on at the like top because it's just like a bone color but i'm hoping it'll still show up quite bluish because the base like it's just kind of just set the powder um i mean set the cream so it doesn't crease and go yucky which it already kind of is because i'm using a really old white gel liner <laughs> i need a new one Honestly, it's working absolutely fine. Thank goodness. Just darkened it a little bit so that you can see the true colors because the lighting outside's a bit crazy. What's new? Um, but yeah, that's kind of how we are looking. So now I'm just going to probably... Oh, look at this. This cream eyeshadow needs to be thrown out. Um, I'm just going to like do my foundation and everything now, to be honest. And then we'll come back to the eyes, do the eyeliner and everything, which is a big part of it. I might actually use some... Leo Ali BB cream. This is in the shade, does it have a shade? Three. And I'm using a flat face brush because I just feel like the finish is very like 60s, like something a little bit dewy, not too full on, not too powdery. And it did say that they were getting more into like sheer formulas when I was looking online, like researching the makeup back then. But I'm sure there was still some people that preferred that look from like the 50s and 40s and stuff where it was a lot more like matte. So, you know, everyone's always had personal preferences throughout the time. So this is just my little interpretation. And then I'll just add some concealer wherever I need it. I just wanna know which decade starts. Why is my ear so freaking red as with these earrings? I'm gonna like put makeup over them. Um, when does freaking bronzer start coming in? Like, please, I love bronzer. And I'm like looking forward to the decade where I can just like bronze. Like surely that'll be like 90s or something. I'm not too sure. But I just think of like the J-Lo look. You know, bronzer and everything. Did she always do the bronze, like J-Lo bronzer look? Or was that something that came in a bit later? I don't know. I need to do some research. All right, I'm going to conceal under my eyes. Just using the same concealer I used before. And I'm not doing a super like sharp line to end my eyeshadow on the outer corner. I'm just kind of like, I don't, I'm just putting it in there. I'm not do, doing like a super sharp cut look. You know, I don't know. I don't know if I'm making sense right now because I'm low-key just winging it. And I am going to make sure to set that concealer really well because we are going to be drawing on some false lower lashes. I'm just going in with the yellow powder from my MAC contour kit. I'm blending that from the inner part of my eye all the way up the cheekbone, just like this in this shape. I'm also just going to use the same powder just over my T-zone to mattify a little bit, just where I need it. You can kind of still see my breakouts underneath this foundation, but I don't mind. I'm just going to rock it. All right, so waterline. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm going to do my upper lashes and everything before I do the bottom just because I want to use white eyeliner, which was very on trend on the lower. Um, because if I do the white eyeliner first and then I do my mascara and everything on top, there is a chance it will like transfer down. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of like patchiness from the cream eyeshadows on my eyelid, please. Pretend that's not there. I'm just adding a little bit of the blue eyeshadow just for a little bit more coverage over some of those patchy areas. The color called Y though from the palette that we used. If eyeliner on top, let's go in with. This is the Benefit Roller Liner in black. It looks like they did do eyeliner all the way across and then like it wasn't winged as much upwards a lot of the time. So I think I'm gonna do like this kind of shape. See how it's like winged like straight downish. Something like that. I feel like that's perfect. Oh my gosh, this makeup would be so bomb for a dress up party. And then all you need to find is like high neckline, like patterns and stuff, like a bandana. You could change the color to just be whatever color you wanted. You wouldn't have to do blue. All right, so before I pop on the lashes on top, I'm going to whip on some Annika Long Lash Mascara. I love this one. I've been talking about this for years. Um, just to cover up 
my lashes and then I don't know what kind of falsies we'll do today. Something semi-dramatic, I suppose. Oh shit, that went everywhere. Okay, why am I like vibing this look so much though? Like this is cool. For lashes, I think I might use Baby Girl today because they give a very like a doe-eyed kind of effect. Um, I think they're gonna go perfectly with this type of look. Let's give them a go. So this is my before and after. So I've just kind of put them on quite flat so they kind of also have that kind of like doe-eyed effect. They're still drying. Yeah, these are very soft and fluttery and not too long. I'm just gonna add some additional mascara just to blend since I did apply them like a little bit different today. I just wanna make sure that there's no like gaps in between. Oh my gosh, they're so fun. Okay, and now we are going to just clean up this black, first of all. And I think I'm going to do my lower lashes and then put in the white eyeliner. So I'm just gonna go back in with my Ooh, eyeliner. I'm nervous for this bit. I feel like it's a little bit easier to start at the bottom and drag upward so you can get a proper like little point because if you go downward I feel like it, I don't know. <sighs> this is really hard. You could obviously just stick on lower lashes. We do have lower lashes with XO Beauty. Um, but I just wanted to do like the kind of trick that they used to do, you know. You guys get the idea. I'm just going to do this off camera because I'm like all the way down here and you can barely even see me anyways so. I'll oh, see you in a minute. Oh no, that one was really thick. All right, now I've got this AOA Skinny Under Lash Mascara, just cause I don't wanna like mess up my waterline. Cause we're gonna be putting white on there in a second and I'm just gonna like put this all over my lower lashes as well. You can see I only did like fake ones halfway cause I just thought it looked nice. You could go the whole way if you wanted. But I feel like because my eyelashes are so long, I feel like it looks good this way. Kind of emphasizes the outer corner and then I've still got like a lot of lash happening in the inner. I'm going quite heavy handed. I might do a couple of coats. Oh, that looks cool. Mine's a little bit messy. I feel like this eye turned out so much better, but when does it not? That always friggin' happens. Cause it's the ugly side of my face and it just, it's just payback, I guess. I don't know what for, but hey. Okay, something like that. Are we looking 60s? I feel like we are guys. I feel like it's coming together. Oh my God, why do I really like this? I low-key want to like stack another lash on top, like how they said that they used to stack lashes. I feel like this looks more doe-eyed though, do you know what I mean? Then if I like add another one, it looks dope, but it really lifts my eye and makes it look, once again, less like doe-eyed. I do like that look too. Like, what do you think? This is definitely a little bit more on like, on theme, I think. I just don't know. Let's just wait and see how it looks till the end. Okay. White on the inner waterline. I'm just going to use the same gel liner. See how much that just really finishes it off? Like that looks so much more 60s already. Even though it already looks 60s. But that just really like, yeah, that sealed the envelope. If you say envelope, you're weird by the way. It's envelope. Oh, it feels so good to be filming. I've tried to film this look for like three days in a row and it's just been storming and like the lighting's been so bad like so many shadows and everything even with my lights on so I just like waited until we had a good day today is a good day I mean it got a little bit dodgy there for a little bit but it's coming together oh that looks so cool I guess we'll do blush now I haven't even set that area but I'm just going to do a really soft like pale pastel blush like how they said a lot of soft pinks and peaches on the cheeks so in here I have a whole bunch of different shades. I might even take this one. This is called Head Over Heels by Makeup Geek. And I just feel like that's perfect. I'm gonna use the same shimmer tulip brush that we used under our eyes. And I'm just going to apply that to the cheekbone kind of. And just blend it out. There was like a little note I wrote down that I saw of how to like apply it, like what shape. Cause they had a certain shape apparently. Narrow triangle under the cheekbones and in the hollows of the cheeks. Okay, well I haven't done that. Eyes are worn heavily made up using dark defining shadows, aqua green and blue over a base of white shadow or cream. Well, I kind of did that. Love that for me. Like, I'm sorry, I just think that looks great though. Like that just, it works, it looks good. Oh my God, I've finally done a decades look. I'm solid just like, I love this. Like even though there's no like contouring and bronzer and stuff yet, like I still love this, it's just fun. It's creative, it's cool. Lips are pale and outlined with a darker shade of lip liner. And it says like gloss was sometimes used, was that true? Yeah, their lips do look really creamy, pale and creamy, or even a little bit shimmery. So I think I'm gonna start with Michaela Lip Pencil by Exo Beauty. It's like a pink 
and it's like a mid pink but then we'll just follow it up with like that paler color like a pastel every time i'm doing my decade series i have flashbacks to that freaking 1920s makeup was it the 1920s the lip <laughs> One day I really want to do like an iconic makeup look series and it's just going to be like iconic makeup looks throughout the ages like for example the Cleopatra look like the Elizabeth Taylor one or like a Twiggy look or Marilyn Monroe and then like all the way up to like more like recent icons with makeup like you know like J.Lo even like Ariana Grande's like just stuff like that would be fun. I'm going to take a lesion by XO Beauty just do a few little dabs and then blend it and then I'm gonna go over the top with this Luxe Gloss by Colourpop and it just cuddle. Normally I do just a little bit on the inner and like ugh, the center. I don't know why I said inner. Um but I'm gonna put it all over. Oh that smells so good. Okay. Um and then just to finish off the brows I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of my brow set in Beguile by MAC. Just keeping the brows natural. I feel like I've kind of nailed it. Okay, now for the hair. So I'm gonna let my hair down and I'm just gonna do a classic kind of like sleek look that is something that you could actually wear now too. So I've been seeing this hairstyle a whole lot all over Instagram, just like the bangs. You slick them down and then have a little bit more volume in the back. You can wear a headband and then like sleek straight hair. So I think the first step is just to like straighten the hair. Do I just do that off camera? Hold on one second. I've actually got a new hair tool that I might try use. I just don't know if I can use it with dry hair. All right, so I've got my GHD Rise heating up. I feel like that will be perfect. I might do like little flicky bits at the ends. Um, if you look up 60s hairstyles, like there's a lot of volume. Sometimes it's sleeker straight, sometimes there's a soft body wave. Headbands were in, like I said. I feel like Lily Collins is very inspired by like the 60s hair maybe. She always has that kind of vibe, like the Bridget Bardo huge volume, which I don't think I can do that, but I don't know. Let's just like have a play around. Like I might do something similar to this, maybe a little bit of wave. I don't know. I love it, although I feel like this is once again very, you know, current like there's a lot of this hairstyle at the moment like with the front bangs kind of like slipped back and like a little bit more volume throughout the rest let's just um figure it out as we go i guess i've got the ghd hair um protect spray i've already got this one from yesterday but i that's something i don't understand with hair like heat protectant spray does it stay there or do you have to reapply it each time you use heat? Like obviously it washes out, but that's what I mean. Like can you put it in and then not have to wear it again until you wash your hair? Or do you do it each time you use a heat tool? Does anyone know? Because I just kind of like assume you have to keep putting it in, but I'm not too sure. Brush out my hair so it's nice and smooth and it's feeling far less greasy because of the um, dry shampoo, which is good. Now, I've never used this hair tool before and it's probably going to be a disaster. And I'm probably going to use it wrong, so don't at me. Okay, so I'm going to go down with a middle part. I'm just going to make sure it's nice and straight. And then I think what I'll do straight away is just take sections of hair from the front. So I'm just going to use my fingernail and just take like all of the stuff that will be like kind of clipped behind my ear anyway. So I'm just going to turn this on. Why do I look like a pixie when I've got my ear out like this? While it heats up, I'll just do the other side too. Try to get it even, tie that up and get it out of my way. So I just want to like straighten the hair that's going to go around my face. Then I'm going to take all of this hair and just like straighten it and pin it. I have got some hairspray, so I'm just going to spray it down. You could probably use like a toothbrush or something, but I don't have a spare one. Now for the rest, I just want it like straightish. And then a couple of bits that kind of like wave at the bottom maybe and a bit of volume at the back. So I'm just going to start by like, oh, I just almost burnt myself. I'm just going to start by like smoothing my hair and then like at the very ends I might just like kind of wave it up a little bit just to give it a little flicky flick. So I'm just going to like wrap my hair around and then kind of like work it through away from my face. Just like a little flicky. That bobby pin that you can see is very annoying. Oh my god look. It's doing it. Okay, I just need to smooth out all of this hair up the top. It'd be so much easier probably just to use a straightener, but I can't be bothered. I'm being lazy. So I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna like go like this and just try to like get some volume in the root and just kind of twist it while I'm pulling down on the section. Once again, I don't know what I'm doing. And then flipping and then kind of like 
flicking upward it's kind of working so once again going underneath the section kind of like rotating it do it a few times it was really smooth so I quite like the effect it's giving and then just flicking and then putting pressure on that hair and just flicking it up oh that's so pretty all right I'm gonna keep doing my hair off camera I'll do like one complete side and just show you like how it looks compared and then we'll finish it off. Yeah, this actually does give you volume so I'm not doing any teasing at all. I'm just literally taking little sections and kind of like sitting it there like a hot roller and I'm kind of pulling straight upward and like look it's actually giving volume. Like I'm kind of obsessed. Small sections just going like this holding it there for a few seconds. It doesn't hurt either because there's bristles so I'm not like scorching my scalp at all. It's just like I don't, it's just warmish it's not hot. And then I just went like this on the end, see how I've got that like flicky ends? Um, all I did was just take each section and I just go like that and just like wrap it around and leave it there. So volume up top and then just straight, 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 straight and then fluk, wrap the ends and just hold it like that. You could use a um, hair straightener and a curler combo to do that. Wrap it like that and hold it there and kind of pull against it, pull straight upwards in the air to give it that like volume. Oh my god, I actually feel like I've done something. Oh my god. Like I've already done like this back section, but I haven't done like the side just here. And like look how much more volume the side has. I'll probably like brush it out in a second, but like that's so cool. And it looks smooth and soft, like I'm low-key obsessed. And I think I'll just take a piece of ribbon and do like a little um ribbon in my head. Maybe it would be easier if I just tie it up again quick. I've got this ribbon. Maybe I can face tune it blue. <laughs> I'm just gonna like tie it around the back. Trying not to get my hair caught in it because I really don't want to rip out my hair. I guess let's just see what it looks like when I take down the rest of my hair. Okay, I'm just gonna brush out my hair. All right, well, anyways, that is my 60s look. I actually love this. This is probably one of my favorite videos I have filmed in so long. If you backcombed and added like hairspray and teasing stuff, like you'd nail the look, like the hair. That's just like with no styling product in there. It looks a little bit flat and funny just because of like where my hair parts. It would have been better probably if I did it from like wet hair and just like blow dried it in that shape. I love the eye makeup. I think it's so much fun. Um, I just I just love everything. I love everything. I love the colors. I wish I had a better outfit to wear with it, like something with a bit of pattern or something, but I just don't have anything like that in my wardrobe. It would have been so cool though. Like I would love to wear this again for like a dress up party or something like that. I hope you guys are excited for the 70s look next. The 60s by far is definitely my favorite look so far. I hope you guys love it and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye! <laughs>